We'll now continue by discussing document properties and profiles. As discussed earlier, it is possible to apply document properties to a document throughout the process. We are about to introduce another shape into our process and to help us apply a custom file name to each document which passes through it. When the file name is originally outputted, by default, it's saved as a .dat file name equal to its creation date, timestamp, and milliseconds, indicating when the process was executed. So when sending a file through a process, the execution does not relay the original document file name. If you want something other than the default file name, you must select the document properties to either rename the file or to keep its original name. We configure properties using the set property shape, which allows you to set values for documents and properties. We use the set property shape to extract runtime related information related to a document or to set new properties for a destination document. As mentioned earlier, we handle document properties by using the set property shape. The set property shape acts as a two-part container consisting of the properties to set, such as an FTP file name, and the parameters that are connected to a specific property, such as a static file name. The more we work with the set property shape, the more we're going to understand its flexibility and versatility. Now remember, the set property shape has two portions, the property to set and the parameters to apply to the property. Also, it can take advantage of both static and dynamic parameters. As you can see by this slide, there are many parameters which you can choose from. We often use the set properties shape to serve as a common interface for configuring dynamic runtime inputs, including, but not limited to, reference elements from documents, reference system date from where the process is executing, define lookup inputs against databases and system APIs, and build dynamic messaging and notifications. Static and dynamic are two document profile types. We'll configure both shortly. But first, we must discuss another important component, the profile. To use dynamic parameters, we first need to have something to reference in the desired document. To do this, we create and use what is known as a profile. Profiles describe the document layout or format that is read into or sent out of Atomsphere. For example, to describe a flat file, the profile has field names, delimiters, column positions, data types, min and max shapes, etc. A profile is not a shape, but it is a component that some shapes use. The structure of each profile consists of data elements of a specific document type. The example on this slide is an XML profile. Maps use profiles. To map an XML document to a flat file, set one profile to match the XML file layout and the other profile to match the flat file. You can use individual profiles when inspecting the document data. Individual profile elements are commonly referenced as parameters for decision, cleanse, program command, message, route, document properties, and exception shapes. You can create profiles several different ways. Manually, you can click on the plus new button on the build tab to create a profile. Since profiles are components, they are saved to the component library and can be referenced over and over. When manually creating a profile, simply click the add child element to insert the desired profile element. Upload a file or schema. In an upcoming exercise, you'll learn how to use this option. Using a built-in wizard, you can upload a file or a schema containing the desired profile type and structure from your computer. This auto-populates the elements within the new profile. Import the connector operation. Once the connector component is configured in the connector shape, 
run the document wizard from the connector shape operation to create a new profile. The wizard will connect to the particular source, such as a database, FTP, CRM system, using the login credentials held within the connection component. Now, once connected, it builds the object tree and allows you to choose the desired elements to import. Once complete, the import the object into the new profile where you can make the changes and save it into your component explorer. I'm now going to show you how to create an XML profile. We're going to do exercise number nine, create an XML profile. This begins on pages 29 to 32. Let's do exercise number nine to create our XML profile. We're going to come up to where it says Boomi Essentials in our Component Explorer, the folder. We're going to click on the drop down and select New Component. For the type, we're going to go down where it says Component and we're going to scroll. They're in alphabetical order and we're going to select Profile, which is in the P section. The name of the profile is going to be Account. XML. It's going to automatically go into the Boomi Training, Boomi Essentials folder, and we want this to be an XML profile. We have a choice. There's two ways of importing our profile. We can select the green Import a Profile button, or we can select the blue Import button. The type of profile can be an XML file, it can be an XML schema, or if you're using EDI, it can be RosettaNet. We're going to be selecting XML file. We need to choose the file that we want to upload. I have my Boomi out directory. I am going to select the account file. I will click on Next. The wizard will then import my XML file and it is displayed over here. Next, I will just click on Save and Close to save my XML profile. This portion of our video is concluded, but please make sure you complete the exercise before moving to the next video.